Hi, this is real estate attorney and legal blogger Roy Oppenheim from the trenches. I want to talk to you a little bit about what I will be telling, and my wife, who's also an attorney, will be telling our children when it comes time for them to consider to buy a home uh, a little, you know, in a, in a few years. Uh, real estate values now are at their, are at their best values in years. And we, we, we've seen the, the bottom of the market. Interest rates are, are also exceptionally low. So the question is, what do we tell our children uh, concerning when it's time to buy a house and, and how to buy a house? And I want to impart with you what knowledge we have obtained through this entire crisis. And, and there are five things I want to go over with you real, real quickly, if I may. Number one, I don't think you should use both spouses' income to qualify for the mortgage. And the reason I say that is that if you're going to be building a family, building a home, you don't want to have that obligation that both spouses have to work full time and have made that commitment to the bank. I think that's a bad idea. I think that second income should be used for reserves. It should be used for, for college. It should be used for other things. But it should not be used for the, uh, the purchase of, of the home. Second, uh, only one spouse should sign the mortgage. Now, this is really, really important. We don't want to have both spouses sign the mortgage because if both spouses sign the mortgage and God forbid there's a problem, we don't want to have a credit impairment issue for both spouses. And in fact, uh, we advise clients very frequently that uh, when they have a choice and they do have to walk away, that, that if only one spouse has signed the mortgage, that they effectively can do what I call the bus. And that is one, but one, one of the spouses ends up under the bus, usually the husband, and that the, 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 the other spouse, the wife, ends up on top of the bus her credit unscathed, and then we can use her credit to restore the, the credit of the, of the entire family. The other thing is, you probably should have close to six months of reserve income before you buy a house, because there are all kinds of contingencies that occasionally occur. Up, up north, you may need a new boiler. Down in, in the south, you may need an air conditioning system. You could have a roof leak. You could have hurricanes. You could have tornadoes. You could have deductibles. You're going to need to have that cash cushion. So that's number three. Number four. You shouldn't buy a house with zero down. It's not a good idea. 10, historically 20% has been the, 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 the right amount, and I, I must advocate that that still is the same today. And, and finally, how much of your income, of, the, of that spouse's income, should you be allocating to uh, that mortgage payment, the house payment? And it probably should not exceed much more than 30%. Uh, I think if you go beyond that, you're really going to put a crimp on, on, on things and that you're also going to put yourself in a, in a position of tremendous vulnerability. So if you follow Roy's five rules, I think you will uh, be uh, in, in good stead in terms of how to advise your kids, certainly the way I'm going to advise my kids when it comes time to buy a house. Roy Oppenheim from the, from the trenches. See you soon.